Saskatchewan Youth Parliament. 100 Years of Leadership. It's an institution that some say has conquered time. It is based on ancient traditions, yet remains fresh and vibrant. It's over a century old, yet is driven by youthful energy. This unique, age-defying institution is Saskatchewan Youth Parliament. Founded in 1912, SYP is going strong in the 21st century as a youth-run, youth-led organization that has served as a training ground for leaders in politics, civil service, business, journalism, and many other fields. SYP is a nonpartisan, not-for-profit organization whose mission is to provide Saskatchewan young people with opportunities to expand their knowledge of parliamentary procedure while fostering good citizenship. The organization is dedicated to developing leadership and public speaking skills among youth. SYP strives to create an inclusive environment in which members forge lasting relationships based on cooperative learning and mutual respect. SYP has a proud history of producing distinguished alumni, including former Saskatchewan Lieutenant Governor Gordon Barnhart, former Prime Minister John G. Diefenbaker, former Federal Minister of Finance Ralph Goodale, former Saskatchewan Premier Lauren Calvert, current Saskatchewan Cabinet Minister Ken Dayoff, and former Chief of the Saskatoon Tribal Council George LaFond, just to name a few. What is its secret? How has SYP so consistently brought out the best qualities in the young men and women who attend it? Let's look back over the past 100 years to gain some insights into this very special organization. Saskatchewan Youth Parliament has actually had a number of names and incarnations. It first began in 1912 as the Saskatchewan Older Boys Parliament under the auspices of the Methodist Church. Saskatchewan itself was only seven years old and with a sparse population of only half a million people. With the province's road and communication infrastructure still in its infancy, this early version of Youth Parliament had a hard time gaining a foothold. During the unstable times following the outbreak of the First World War, the original Youth Parliament collapsed. While short-lived, this version of SYP had at least one significant achievement. It was during this period that John G. Diefenbaker joined the organization. The story goes that as a young man, Diefenbaker once told his mother that his ambition was to be prime minister one day. His mother told him his dream was impossible because he lived in Western Canada. Diefenbaker's experience in youth parliament along with his lifelong determination helped prove his mother wrong. After the demise of the original youth parliament, Almost a decade passed before a new addition arose. In the early 20th century, a so-called boys' work movement had emerged around the world in response to the needs of young men who worked or went to school during the day but had nothing constructive to do in their free time. A number of well-known organizations grew out of this movement, including the YMCA. In Canada, the YMCA joined with a number of Protestant churches to create Tuxus which stood for Training Under Christ in Service. This group headed up several projects, including the revival of the provincial Older Boys Parliaments under the Texas brand. Saskatchewan's Texas-based Older Boys Parliament began in 1923, when it began its tradition of holding its annual Christmas session at the Saskatchewan Legislature. The new, improved Saskatchewan Older Boys Parliament grew and thrived for seven years until, once again, world events caught up with it. First, the drought and the Great Depression of the 1930s devastated Saskatchewan's agricultural economy and turned groups like Older Boys Parliament into an expensive luxury most families simply could not afford. Then, just as the economy showed signs of recovery, the outbreak of the Second World War focused almost all of society's attention and resources onto military needs. But through a drought, a depression, and two wars, the spirit of the youth parliament movement remained unconquerable. In 1945, after a 15-year hiatus, Saskatchewan Older Boys Parliament arose once again to pick up where it had left off. It is this version of the organization that eventually evolved into the Saskatchewan Youth Parliament we know today. 
although it was not a smooth evolution. Ideas of tolerance and openness were very different in the late 1940s. In those days, members debated whether to allow smokers, women, and non-Christians into the organization. They decided at that point to allow smokers, but not women or non-Christians. Throughout the 1950s, Older Boys Parliament set down roots and grew into a strong organization. This was a booming time for Canada, both in terms of the economy and the population. Older Boys Parliament had an important role to play during these defining times. By the early 1960s, the organization could count as alumni such notable names as Gordon Barnhart, Keith Morrison, Simon DeYoung, and Ralph Goodale. I was finishing high school, beginning university, and getting interested in politics, government, and the proper functioning of democracy. I read all the textbooks, and I kept up with current affairs, but still, I was a spectator, just watching what others were doing. Saskatchewan Youth Parliament gave me a chance to learn and to understand government and politics through actual participation. The late 1960s brought a time of profound change throughout the Western world. Styles changed, music changed, and values changed. Institutions that had been cast in stone for decades suddenly found themselves forced to adapt very quickly. For the youth parliament movement in Saskatchewan, the time had come to put an end to the Old Boys Network. Beginning in the late 1960s, debate over allowing women into the organization became louder than ever. Former Saskatchewan Premier Lorne Calvert recalls that in 1969, he gave a passionate but tongue-in-cheek speech against admitting females, while his then-girlfriend watched from the gallery. Apparently, they broke up soon afterwards. Finally, by 1972, young women and non-Christians were allowed in, and the organization was rebranded with the title we know today, Saskatchewan Youth Parliament. Just six years later, Muriel Gay, now Muriel Garvin, became the first female premier of SYP. What I found happened for me was that uh, my first year as a backbencher, I was quite terrified to say anything at all. And then as time went along and I became more and more confident and more comfortable with my opinions and my ability to express my opinions, I got more involved in leadership uh, role. The 1970s brought with it the October crisis, the energy crisis, and the disco era, which some would consider a music crisis. It also fostered another generation of young leaders inspired by SYP. Alumni from this period include Leader Post journalist Will Shaban, CTV anchorman Rob McDonald, and many other lawyers, diplomats, journalists, and at least one wildly inaccurate weatherman. This trend continued into the 1980s as future politicians and business executives such as Ken Sheveldayoff and Scott Banda joined the ranks. The 1980s also brought a very special occasion for the organization. In 1987, Saskatchewan Youth Parliament celebrated its 75th anniversary at a reunion which united generations of youth parliamentarians. This led to the initial draft of the organization's first formal constitution and standing orders in 1988. Throughout the 1990s and into the 21st century, Saskatchewan Youth Parliament has continued to serve as a beacon, attracting and empowering the best and brightest of Saskatchewan youth. What has made SYP's century of achievement all the more remarkable is the organization's tradition of being maintained and run by the young people themselves. From managing the organization's finances to handling its media relations, the members of SYP have continually proven that they have mastered management skills far beyond their years. Through war and upheaval, through drought and economic downturns, through the Beatles and disco and punk and rap, the youth parliament legacy has thrived through all the challenges the past generations have presented. In the face of our modern world of economic and political upheaval and rapid technological change, it is impossible to imagine what our world will be like 100 years from now. But one thing is a pretty good bet. 
No matter what the future brings, Saskatchewan Youth Parliament will remain a vibrant part of our province for many years to come.